Sonic has been around for 32 years now, and throughout that time, his design in the games has changed a lot. Sometimes it's subtle, and other times it's going from classic to modern Sonic. I'm going to go over the history of Sonic's many different design changes throughout the games, starting from Sonic 1 all the way through Sonic Frontiers, and even looking at different versions of Sonic such as 3D Classic Sonic and Boom Sonic. Let's just get right into things with our starting point, which is actually not Sonic 1, but comes even before that. Something that is pretty commonly known nowadays is that Sonic didn't actually start out as a hedgehog, but rather as a rabbit instead. This original character design by Naoto Oshima was known as Feels the Rabbit, a totally normal sounding name. Totally. Feels the Rabbit was a lot more heavily stylized in a cartoony style, as opposed to Sonic's eventual final design, which does still feature some classic cartoon design choices like big gloves and eyes, but less so than Feels the Rabbit had. I do think it was definitely for the best that Sega went with Sonic the Hedgehog over Feels the Rabbit, but seeing this original design as a side character in the game would have been a neat reference. Now we actually move on to Sonic himself. Of course, still designed by Naoto Oshima, Mr. Needle Mouse himself features a much more Sonic-like appearance, with some very slight changes being made in the final sprite used in Sonic the Hedgehog 1. Speaking of which, the first official sprite design for Sonic, now known as Classic Sonic, is an instantly recognizable character to almost anybody that knows of pop culture. Sonic's design features his signature blue spikes with a round torso, big left hands, and bright red shoes. I think almost everyone has seen this classic Sonic design before, and up until Sonic 3, it stayed relatively the same with some slight color changes in Sonic 2. Getting into Sonic 3 now, Sonic still has his easily identifiable look, but now with smaller pupils, an overall chunkier body, and rounder shoes. This specific classic Sonic sprite would later go on to influence classic Sonic's eventual reintroduction to 3D in Sonic Generations, but that's getting ahead of ourselves. For now, let's move on to Sonic's first step into 3D, Sonic 3D Blast. Sonic 3D Blast still features sprite-based gameplay, but this time in a top-down isometric 3D style. Sonic's sprite design here is actually based off of a 3D model that can be seen in the opening of Sonic 3D Blast, which is a pretty accurate representation of Sonic's sprite from Sonic 3, featuring a more spherical torso, but with shoes that are less round than they were in Sonic 3. This model wasn't actually used for anything else other than this game and its sprites, so the design wasn't heavily modified at all. Sonic Jam is the first time Sonic was actually playable and controllable in full 3D. Sonic Jam is a collection of classic Sonic games, but also includes a 3D hub world section that uses a different model than the one seen in 3D Blast. This model is a lot more low poly than the 3D Blast one, due to it needing to be used in game rather than being a pre-rendered cutscene, although the specific design choices used are still consistent with Sonic's classic design that he's had since Sonic 3. This model is almost identical to the one used in the first fully 3D Sonic game, Sonic R. Now we're able to move on to Sonic's true foray into 3D, Sonic Adventure, and there are a lot of different design changes here, beginning with this design. To start, we have now entered what is considered the Dreamcast era of Sonic, and the first look at a more modern Sonic. Sonic's design now features green eyes, a longer, less rounded torso, longer spikes, a darker shade of blue, and the round shoes return. This design changed a lot compared to previous Sonic design changes. Before Sonic Adventure, each different Sonic design still felt like an iteration of Naoto Oshima's original design, but with Sonic Adventure, it was noticeably different. This redesign of Sonic was done by Yuji Uikawa, and his art is some of the most beloved among Sonic fans. Following Sonic's first true redesign into 3D, his design would continue to get many iterations throughout the years, beginning with even the next game, Sonic Adventure 2. Sonic Adventure 2's Sonic design still closely resembles that of Sonic Adventures, but this time his torso is even less round and almost entirely flat. Other than that, his design is still Yuji Uikawa's redesign. Oh yeah, and the soap shoes. The soap shoes were included in Sonic Adventure as a promotion for the real-life shoe brand Soap, which were meant for rail grinding, which Sonic does a lot of in Sonic Adventure 2. Sonic's official design after Sonic Adventure 2 never includes the soap shoes again, but recently in games like Sonic Frontiers, Sonic has had some customizable options that include things such as the soap shoes. Now with a more controversial design, we move on to Sonic Adventure once again, but this time it's Sonic Adventure DX, which has updated models with more polygons. This game doesn't change any core design features of Sonic, but it does make Sonic look closer to the way he does in Sonic Adventure 2 with a more flat torso. The reason this design is controversial is mostly because of how bad of a port Sonic Adventure DX is, which does include the way this model is animated in-game and especially in the cutscenes. I'm sure you've seen them before. Now we can finally move on from the adventure games and into Sonic Heroes. Sonic Heroes is where we really start to see Sonic's in-game model have a much higher polygon count, therefore allowing more detail to be shown through the curves of his spikes and more defined torso. Other than the updated detail, Sonic's design is still the same from Sonic Adventure 2, just without the soap shoes. After Sonic Heroes came Shadow the Hedgehog, which does include a new Sonic model, and is probably the first true time we see the design that's known as Modern Sonic. 
Modern Sonic's design features a more uniform row of spikes on his model, as opposed to the sometimes weird placement on older Dreamcast models. His torso is now proportioned better in comparison to his arms, legs, and head, and his back spikes also now get progressively shorter the further down they go. This model still isn't Modern Sonic's final form, that comes a bit later on, but this is definitely where Sonic's design began to stagnate in terms of drastic changes. Well, except for one more game, Sonic 06. Sonic 06 was meant to be a reboot for the Sonic franchise, and so each character had their design switched up. Sonic in this game features a much more lanky body with longer limbs and longer, slightly thinner spikes. Sonic's torso is now almost human in proportion, as he has a more defined upper chest, and his legs connect right to the torso because it is no longer round at all. Sonic 06 as a game was a massive failure, as I'm pretty sure everyone in existence knows, so this design didn't stick around any longer than 06 did. Sonic and the Secret Ring's Sonic model is almost identical to the one in Shadow the Hedgehog, with the addition of the flame on his chest and the ring on his finger, which was only around for this game. I'm also just going to include Sonic and the Black Knight's design here, because it is almost the exact same, except for the fact that Sonic has a sword. Now we get to modern Sonic's true final design with Sonic Unleashed. This design doesn't have too much different in its core design aside from being a complete reversion of 06 back to Shadow the Hedgehog. The main differences are similar to that of Sonic Heroes, where the model now features a much smoother and more complete design due to its high polygon count, which allowed for a much more detailed and intricate design. Almost everything that I said about the Shadow the Hedgehog model here is consistent, just more graphically upgraded, which is easy enough to see. Moving forward, this would be Sonic's most consistent design ever, being the one that he's had for almost 15 years, and while there have been some slight changes, they are very slight changes that are almost unnoticeable unless you're actively looking for them. The next game to feature a new design of Sonic would be Sonic Generations, but not for modern Sonic's design. It's actually the reintroduction of Classic Sonic that I talked about briefly earlier. Classic Sonic's 3D design is very Sonic 3 inspired, as you can see from his very round design and lighter shade of blue. His eyes are also classic black instead of green, and his shoes are just a tad more pointy than modern Sonic's. Overall, this Classic Sonic design was both influenced by Sonic 3's sprite as well as modern Sonic's own design, as some design choices were made, such as the uniform spikes and back spikes that get smaller the further down they go. This design was also made possible by the upgraded technology of the time, compared to previous 3D Classic Sonic models that had a much lower polygon count, therefore having less detail than this model. The last really major Sonic design change was made for Sonic Boom, a failed spin-off slash reboot of Sonic yet again. This design is one of the most drastic changes in design Sonic has ever seen, as he has a much taller and lankier design like in 06, smaller hands, smaller spikes in between his bigger ones, and for some reason has a bunch of extra clothing such as a bandana on his neck and bandages wrapped around his hands and feet. I don't think this design was ever really meant to replace the current design like Sonic 06 tried to do, but regardless, it shared the same fate as that design being an eventual failure. This design did stick around a bit longer, getting multiple games and even a TV show, but Modern Sonic eventually made his return with some very small changes. Sonic Forces features the good old Modern Sonic model once again, this time with a different lighter blue color and shorter spikes. These design changes are hardly noticeable though, and the core of Modern Sonic's design is exactly the same as it has been since Sonic Unleashed. This was also the model used in Sonic Frontiers, so there were no design changes there. And that's all of them. All of Sonic's many different and sometimes confusing designs that he's had throughout the years. Some were good, some were bad, and some were better than the rest. But I'll let you guys decide in the comments which ones all of those are. Feel free to give this video a like if you are interested in these many different Sonic designs, and maybe consider subscribing if you're interested in Sonic in general, as I make a lot of different Sonic content. Thanks for watching until the end of this video, I'll see you next time.